Now the phosphonium illid is a reactive intermediate. It's not something that we can put in a bottle and store. So it needs to be made from stable starting materials and used up very quickly. So we typically make it and then immediately add the ketone or aldehyde. But how in the world do we make this species with positive charge on phosphorus and negative charge on carbon right next door? Well, one way to think about this is to start with a positively charged phosphonium salt where the only difference between this cation and the illid is deprotonation of one of these hydrogens. And that deprotonation can be affected with a pretty strong base. Here we're looking for a carbanion, an organolithium like butyl lithium is a good choice in butyl lithium, for example, that can deprotonate at this position adjacent to the positively charged phosphorus. And this generates the illid through electron flow that you see like this, just a proton transfer step, right? To get to the phosphonium cation or phosphonium salt in the first place, we can start with an alkyl halide and take advantage of SN2 reactivity. And the fact that the phosphorus in triphenylphosphine PPH3 is a good nucleophile. It's right below nitrogen on the periodic table, right? And nitrogen is a great nucleophile. Phosphorus is a pretty good nucleophile as well. So it can engage in an SN2 reaction with an alkyl halide to give a phosphonium salt. Notice that X minus is kicked off as a leaving group. This is typically something like bromide or chloride. And we've made the new phosphorus carbon bond with phosphorus's charge increasing by one unit, formally speaking. So this is an SN2 process as depicted. Now, because this synthesis of the phosphonium illid relies on an SN2 reaction, primary alkyl halides or methyl halides work best in this process. Secondary halides, you may run into problems with elimination or slow reaction, and tertiary alkyl halides are going to react very, very slowly in this substitution process. So this is how we think about generating the phosphonium illid, and then we treat right away with the carbonyl compound. In synthetic schemes, you may see this represented a couple of different ways. You may just see the phosphonium illid just written above the arrow with this SN2 reaction and treatment with a strong base sort of implied. Or you may see the alkyl halide written as the substrate, quote unquote, with triphenylphosphine used as a reagent. This is where that SN2 reaction comes into play. And then the base added in a second step, and this is where that deprotonation reaction comes into play. So these first two steps establish the phosphonium illid, and then in the third step we add the carbonyl compound. In this case, this is acetone, and this gives rise to the product. So these three carbons came from the three carbons in the alkyl halide, and these three carbons came from the three carbons built into the acetone or carbonyl substrate. So fantastic synthetic utility here to go from the world of carbonyls to the world of alkenes, the reactions of which you've already seen in organic chemistry one. There is a cis trans issue in many cases with this reaction though, right? Because if we're establishing an alkene, that alkene could have the cis or trans geometry. Typically, and this is a general guideline for Wittig reactions, the reaction is Z-selective or selective for the cis isomer when unstabilized Wittig reagents are used. Now, the Wittig reagent refers to this phosphonium illid, and unstabilized means that this negative charge in the phosphonium illid is not stabilized by any electron withdrawing groups linked to the carbon. So there is this alternative resonance form with the CP double bond. This is still an unstabilized illid with only hydrogens or only carbon groups or something along those lines connected to the anionic carbon. Those unstabilized illids give the cis isomer predominantly. But if we tack on an electron withdrawing group onto the illid to stabilize the negative charge, we can end up with the E isomer. And generally, the reaction becomes E selective when stabilized reagents, stabilized phosphonium illids are used. And here, stabilized really means delocalized negative charge into an electron withdrawing group, such as an ester. So we see in this right-hand case, when we use a phosphonium illid with an ester group connected to the anionic carbon, we end up with the E or trans isomer selectively. And we can tell this is a stabilized illid if we expand that ester group and realize that quite a bit of the negative charge is delocalized onto the ester oxygen. And this alternative resonance form shows that that's the case. If we'd like to synthesize an alkene, we can now think about the Wittig reaction in the reverse direction to create an alkene from a carbonyl compound. And so in applying the Wittig reaction in multi-step synthesis, we're going to want to think about working alkenes backwards to ketones or aldehydes. This can typically be done in two distinct ways for most alkenes, depending on which side of the alkene, which carbon involved in the carbon-carbon double bond, we want to call the carbonyl group. For example, in this case, 
it's pretty clear that we can make this CC double bond via a Wittig reaction, but there are two ways to do this, making the top carbon the carbonyl carbon and using something like formaldehyde, or making the bottom carbon the carbonyl carbon and using something like 2-butanone as the carbonyl substrate. Let's consider using formaldehyde and this phosphonium illid first. This looks appealing because form formaldehyde is cheap, it's small, it's relatively easy to handle. There's a problem though, if we think about working this phosphonium illid back to the alkyl halide substrate we would need to generate the phosphonium illid, right? We would treat this with PPH3 and then a strong base like butyl lithium to deprotonate it to create this phosphonium illid. But that carbon is secondary, so reaction with PPH3 in an SN2 process is going to be relatively slow. So let's consider the other possibility. Well, the other possibility would use 2-butanone as the ketone substrate and this phosphonium illid with a CH2 group linked to the PPH3. Well, in this case, this phosphonium illid comes from methyl bromide. We treat with PPH3 that replaces the BR with a PPH3 plus group, and then we deprotonate with a base like N-butyl lithium to remove one of these protons. The result is the phosphonium illid. The nice thing about this synthesis, not only will this work great, because this is a methyl halide, which reacts very rapidly in that SN2 process, but both of these are cheap and easily purchased and very easy, easy to handle and deal with. So that synthesis on the right is definitely to be preferred in the case of this alkene. We're going to want to use 2-butanone and this easily preparable phosphonium illid derived from methyl bromide or methyl chloride, some other methyl-based electrophile.